What's up guys, we're going to be building on existing SQL injection attacks and solving this challenge. Order the Christmas special offer of 2014. The issue is that this item doesn't exist in the shop anymore. It's obviously an old item, it was deleted. Having said that, it's still going to be persisting in the database. And in order to access that, let's build on our existing SQL injection attack. As a quick recap, we had this vulnerable parameter Q. It's sent to the back end and it's used to formulate an SQL query and it's union injectable. So this specific query is pulling information from the products table, but we can also union select the SQL column from the SQLite master table. So what we actually see here is the schema for the entire database overlaid against the product keys, which you can see down the left-hand side. So we have things like name, description. Now, of course, we're interested in seeing the full products table, but the first half of the SQL query is not showing us the full products table. We know from previous analysis that this SQL query is only showing us product results where the deleted at column is set to null. We actually want to see those deleted products. So we're actually going to union select a query that extracts all of the information from the products table. So in recap, what we have is the first half of the SQL query, which takes all the results from the products table, but ignores anything that has a deleted at value that's not null. And we're actually going to union select it with a query that's also going to be taken from the products table we're just not going to specify that deleted at has to be null because we're interested in seeing products that have been deleted. Now, the cool thing about this is because we are selecting from products table and then union selecting from products table, we know that the number of columns in both queries is going to be identical. So we actually don't need to worry about balancing out our SQL query. It's going to be automatically balanced. So instead of having all of this select SQL, select two, select three, we can actually just say union select all from products. So let's see if we can modify our request. So instead of all of these plain integers, we're going to say union select all. And then that's more or less the end of our query. We just need to change the table to products and some capital P. then our colon and our comment character. Let's see what we get. And of course we have a bit of an error in our syntax there because instead of all, we actually want to use the asterisk character, which basically means union select all. Now, because both halves of that union select query were from the products table and both have identical columns, it means that unlike some of our previous SQL injection attacks, the keys here for this object actually match up with the value of that key. So where it says ID and name, well, these are in fact the ID and name of this specific product. Now notice that a lot of these products have this deleted at set to null. If we scroll down, we'll begin to see products that don't have a null value for their deleted at. For example, if we have a look at item number 10, this is the first product in the query results that actually have a timestamp for the deleted at key here. By the way, this also just so happens to be the item that we're looking for. This is the Christmas special of 2014. This is the item that we want to try and purchase, even though it's been deleted from the database. Now, when we say deleted, it obviously hasn't been deleted because we're looking at it right now, but it does have a timestamp for the deleted at value. This is what's referred to as soft deleting. Soft deleting means we don't actually delete the item. We simply modify one of the columns in the table to say that this specific item has been deleted. So that's why the regular juice shop query when we search for products in the store only returns results where deleted at is null because it doesn't want to see any of these products that have been soft deleted. Now, why would we choose to soft delete something from a database when we can simply delete it from the database? Well, a couple of reasons. Firstly, it's a security feature. We've all been in that situation where we've deleted something by accident and wished we could undo it. 
Well, if something's been soft deleted, all we have to do in this case is set the deleted at value back to null, and now the item has been undeleted. That action has been undone. Another reason is that a company might just want to keep track of items that they previously had as part of their shop, but are no longer for sale. So they could run some type of query to see all of the deleted products. Maybe they even have an interface that allows an employee to click a button and re-add or undelete that item from the database and allow it to reappear again in the shop. This type of functionality is fairly typical. It's not necessarily a huge security leak in itself. Although of course, if we legitimately don't need an item in the database anymore, then we may as well delete data that's not relevant any longer. But in general, the main problem here is not that the database is using soft deletions, but the problem is of course that it's vulnerable to an SQL injection attack. So we can see all of the items that have been soft deleted, even though ordinarily we would have had no way of accessing these soft deleted items. Now the next part of this puzzle involves simply taking a look at the ID of the item, because this is going to be important when adding products to the product cart. Let's take a look at how that works. Now with many shops in the modern era, it's possible to add items to the cart without being logged in. It's referred to as guest checkout. Well, the OWASP juice shop does not have guest checkout, so we're going to have to log in here. So once we've logged in, we're going to be able to add items to our cart. And it doesn't really matter too much which item we add, but we're going to be interested in intercepting the call that's about to be made to the back end. So let's click the add to basket button and let's watch what happens over on the right hand side in the dev console. Now a few things did happen, but we noticed that one of the requests was actually a post request and it was sent to API basket items. So that starts to feel like it's what we're looking for in this case. Let's have a look at that request and we can see basket ID. That's fairly typical for a customer to be given a unique basket identifier in the case of adding items to the cart. That's not what we're interested in here. Product ID 44. Well, we know that the product ID of the item that's been soft deleted that we want to add is 10. So we could actually just modify this request, resend it to the back end with this product ID parameter modified to 10. Let's do that right now. So we can choose edit and resend on that request. And we have this option to change the parameters in the request body. So all we want to do in this case is change the product ID to 10 and now resubmit that request to the back end. Let's head on over to our cart now to see which items we have. So we have the 20th anniversary celebration ticket, which we legitimately added to our cart via the front end. But guess what? We have this Christmas super surprise box 2014 edition, which we didn't add legitimately. We've sent a modified tampered request to the back end, but it has in fact added that item to our cart. We haven't quite finished the challenge at this stage, although this is the most important hacking part of the challenge, but the challenge involves actually purchasing the item. So we need to add some fake information here. So we'll just say random country, random. Uh, we're gonna have to bypass some JavaScript verification. If it doesn't like the number of digits, then it may not allow us to continue doesn't seem to be flagging anything in this case. I guess it is a vulnerable web app, random address. You can see at the moment that the submit button's grayed out. So we're just trying to bypass the JavaScript verification. I don't think the actual details we enter here matter too much. So let's say random state. And you can see that once we have filled in enough of this form, we have the submit option. Doesn't have a problem with that. Select our newly added random address. Let's choose continue. Choose a delivery speed, okay. And now we get to the payment section of this. I think the way that Juice Shop has been set up is that we can basically add a fake card number and it's still going to process the payment. It's still going to complete the challenge. So card number, let's just type in some digits. There is some possible verification here because we can see it has a digit counter. So it's possible if we don't add enough digits 
you can see it's going to say, please add a valid 16 digit card number. So here we go. This is our valid 16 digit card number. Expiry month, we don't care. 2081, why not? And let's just choose submit. It saved the card for us, so we can now select that card. And we just want to click continue. And we want to place our order. So of course, normally if you entered fake card details and address, the payment probably won't go through. But of course, if it's a vulnerable web app, then who knows what will happen. And there we go. You've successfully solved the challenge Christmas special order the Christmas special offer of 2014. So this was really a mixture of different attacks. This was an SQL injection attack, but it was also a HTT parameter pollution attack where we've modified or tampered with a HTTP request going to the back end. Presumably, we could have even solved this challenge without using SQL injection at all, because so long as we can tamper with that HTTP request going to the back end, we could have tried a bunch of different product IDs and just had a look at what was added to the cart. So this challenge does not necessarily need SQL injection in order to complete it. Thanks for watching guys. Remember to only use these techniques against assets that you own or have been given explicit permission to test.